everybody, it's Simon Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I've got another Mother's Day themed project. These are these mini little um, notebook um, cases, I guess. Um, they've just evolved from the travel journal that I've done, so I've just downsized that and made these little ones. So I am still at my mum's um, on my holiday at the moment, long holiday, um, so I'm raiding her stuff. So she's got a laminator. I had a laminator but when we moved and stuff we just got rid of it so it's something I haven't got again so I've laminated these ones as well. The, the idea is to just have that small thing to go in your handbag. There's nothing too crazy on it, I haven't gone mad with embellishments, nothing to catch inside your handbag um, and it just I just want sometimes just a piece of paper, that's all I need. I don't need little pockets, I don't need all those bits and pieces as lovely as they are so I've just done this really simple one. So you just got little velcro there you could put magnets on there you could have the elastic going around like I did in the travel journal if you want as well and then inside I've got a little pocket here so you can put little receipts um, appointment cards things like that and then I've just done two of these removable um, papers from just copy paper um, and it is just as simple as that so I'm going to add another pocket into the one I'm going to do today on this side just so it's a little bit more I guess it's storage for bits and pieces but that is it so it's a really simple nice little thing just to keep in your handbag so these are the two Mother's Day ones I've done I've done just little bows and little embellishments on the spine there so that's those two and then the one I'm going to make now is for me so <laughs> I have used the Beyond the Shore papers today love 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 these and I'm going to be using this design here today so I just pop that to one side and bring in what we need so I've already cut my little kind of paper book so basically I just put together how many have I got here one two three four five seven eight nine ten eleven I'd say twelve I think there's a one stuck together there twelve pieces of just normal copy paper and then these have been cut down to six and a half by four and a quarter okay um, and then I've just folded them so six and a half by four and a quarter I've put through twelve pieces all at once through my trimmer it was you know I've got the this one here so um, it did manage all 12 pieces. If you think it might struggle, then maybe do half of that, do six at a time. But just cut that down, like I said, to, what was it again? Four and a quarter by six and a half. And then just fold it in half. And that's all you wanna do. So you just, I've done two of them. Um, if you wanna do it all as one big one, you can, but what you find is the pages start to all kind of um, cascade um, on a slope. So um, you don't, maybe don't want to do too many pieces together. If you want to do three of these, you can as well. But like I said, I've just done two because that fits nicely on this half inch um, spine that we've got there. So that's those two pieces prepped. And then I've got some Velcro dots. These are just the 16 mil ones, which I use all the time. And they're by the brand Velcro. And then, in fact, I don't think they are the 16 mil. I think they're bigger. I think we've just put them into this box, but they are the Velcro brand. But I'm sure my 16 mil ones, let me just check. Um, I thought it was smaller than that. These are mil, 10, 15, no they are 16 mil, so it is the right box. Okay, um, then you are going to need, so you need some um, laminating pouches. So these are just inexpensive. Again, I don't know where they're from, they're in my mum's drawer, so I've just pinched those. Um, but again, I'll talk about them a bit more in a minute. And then you just need a few bits of paper. So. I am doing, as I said, this lovely print here. So this piece measures up at, let me grab the scoreboard actually, rather than use, there we go, okay. Use those pieces here. So this piece measures at nine and a quarter by four and a half. And what you want to do is score along the nine and a quarter inch side. You're gonna score at three and three eighths of an inch. One, two, three, yep, three and three eighths. Then three and seven eighths of an inch. Then seven and three eighths of an inch. One, two, three, yep. And then seven and seven eighths of an inch. Okay. And then once you've done that, optional, but I always like to corner, round, a, um, round corner punch this side here. So you've got a big square there, then you've got a half inch spine big square again, another half inch spine, and then this smaller one here. So if I just quickly burnish that, just on that end bit there, just so you can see, that's the piece I've cornered from the right corner rounder, okay? Punched. That's that piece, and then you just need two other pieces of 
uh, three and one eighth of an inch by two and three quarters. And these are for the inside pockets. So you can do one or two or none. Again, entirely up to you. If you wanna keep it really, really simple, then you can. Um, cause this can be reused cause you just, um, you can, uh, as I said, you can take out the white bits of paper so you can just add more in when they're done. Um, so that's everything there. Now, okay, so for the decoration, you need to do that now before you run it through your laminator. Now everything you do, you need to make sure it's really flat. So heat embossing is good to do, die cutting, but obviously just that one die cut um, and you don't really want to do it on very thick card because it just means that the laminating pouches will adhere better to the card that you run through it. Um, so what I've done is I've just die cut my initial, so S, and I'm just going to personalise mine with just a really simple initial there in the middle, which you can just about pick up, but it is there, you can see it. So I'm just using a little bit of glue just to hold it in place. You, Some people kind of, you know, say, oh, you don't really need to stick anything down because it sticks once the, the laminator goes through. All the laminated, laminated pouch does is just keep it in that place. Um, it's not obviously, it doesn't actually stick it. So I'm just putting a little bit of glue just on this just to keep it in place and then I'm just going to so you want to make sure that you're when you're decorating it this is um, so hold on a minute let me make sure I do this right so you flip it over because this is going to be the piece that comes over like so so this is going to be the one that is on the front so just burnish one of them there so bearing in mind that that is going to come over that down there and the glue won't dry yet like so because you've got to remember oh, I didn't burnish the one of these let's just burnish them all make it a bit easier yeah like so so if I just grab myself a pencil mark I'm just going to put a little pencil mark just there so I know that the area to stick this has got to be in the middle of this bit here so I'm just going to lie that down flat and just pop that down like so. So again, if you don't want to put mum, like I've done here, you could do the initial and just make sure it's within this space here, which is what I'm doing now. Like so. So all that is is just really just kind of, you know, tacking it in place. So now I want to run that through my okay, laminator. So just grab one of the pouches and again, lying that down. I'm gonna, these, this um, isn't a corner pouch, so it's only attached by one side. So some of them will be a pocket, if I can find how to get them in. So this one is just opens up, and it's the same on both. So it's got that kind of um, clouded um, effect. Some of them have got a clearer side. If you have those ones, you want to make sure that the clearer side is facing up. Um, and that's the piece that goes on top of the front of your, whatever it is that you are laminating. So, but like I said, these are the same, so it doesn't matter. So I'm just gonna pop this through and I'm gonna put it right down into the corner just so I've got a nice even, um, like little border because it will not go right up to the end here. You can see there's some where I can't get it right to the end. So that just now I'm gonna use that as the same border to have all the way around. So like so, I've got the same, it's about one eighth of an inch. So I've got one eighth of an inch all along here. And then with my trimmer, now people do this, some people do this after they've laminated. I prefer doing it before because then you don't waste, you can re, you can still use all this. If you run all that through the laminator now, you'd have to throw all this away. So it just seems a waste. So I'm just gonna grab my laminator, um, my trimmer, sorry, and just pop it in here. Again, making sure I'm happy that that's all where I want it to be. And then with, again, with that same one eighth of an inch little border, I'm just gonna cut that. So now I can reuse all of that piece there. I'm not gonna get any waste. So I'm happy with all that. And then again, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm not gonna do that one there just because it's, you run the risk of cutting it crooked and stuff. So I'm gonna keep that piece on, but I've certainly saved enough there with that piece. So make sure your laminator's nice and hot. Most of them will have a little, um, uh, button here a little light that will say when it's ready when that flash is green it means it's ready to go so this one I'm just going to put straight through again make sure you're happy everything lays perfectly down and always put through the closed end first okay don't go in from this end where it's open you always want to do the closed end first I'm just going to pop that in okay so that's all gone through nicely but I'm going to run it through again I always run mine through twice so just turn that one off it's great because the laminators these days are so easy to use and they're so portable. I remember when I used to do a lot of laminating, 
quite a long time ago and I used to make a lot of journals. Um, they're huge, they're great big like beige things. Um, I need to try and get up in the loft actually because I've got some really old laminated diaries. I used to laminate my magazines and then roll them up and make them into like little folders and stuff. So I should try and find some of those. All I'm doing is just trimming that end bit there just to give me the same um, acetate. Um, acetate laminated um, border there so you can kind of just see that one eighth of an inch little frame there all the way around okay so that is now nice and strong all nice and sealed and then what I want to do is just with my little corner punch again so I'm just going to take off the corners there because the acetate can get really sharp so that just makes it nice and smooth you don't need to worry about that one because it's going to be hidden inside so now where we've got our score lines you can just go and fold that again and it will fold nicely and stay in its shape and you'll see it becomes nice and strong like so and then you can see now that that is going to sit on the top there and show my little initial nicely so that's all done then you just need to grab I've got a hole punch here and it's the um, one eighth of an inch um, hole punch you do need a small hole punch if you don't have a small hole punch then I would say use your pokey tool to poke through these holes because you do need something small but I'll just do these two first just to show you so that one there so right at the very top can you just see there on that half inch spine right to the very very edge of where the paper is before it hits the clear um, laminated bit here I've just done those two holes together and then I want to do exactly the same again at the other end. Like so. You can see again there. Okay, so you're doing that not on the spine where you've got this little flap, your little kind of um, closure, but on the opposite one there. I've got a piece okay. here. This is the one mil elastic and this is coming in at ten and a half inches okay so you can see it here it's just very very thin now if you're doing a bigger one like you see I used on my uh, traveler's notebook that was really really thick elastic but it was such a big um, obviously note case whereas this is so small you don't need that masses of amount but you could I guess it wouldn't hurt if you did have that it would just make it a little bit bulky that's all so all you want to do is basically we're going to create two elastic kind of um, lines here which is what we're going to hook the paper onto. So starting from the bottom just come under all right so you're coming up like so and then with the other end under like so okay so we're coming all the way up it should just meet but you're going to pull these really really taut so that's why you might think oh they're not going to make it's not going to um, reach but it will because you need to start pulling it so then you feed them back both back through there so you can see I've gone under so I'm coming both of them are coming out on the back here and they've both gone in you can see there on the outside so that is what you'll have on the outside okay on the bottom and then on the top they'll be both coming out so now you want to pull them really really tight so that it's almost like a guitar string okay turn it over and just tie it into a knot so it's nice and tight okay so that's now nice and secure you can just trim that right off Oh. Right. Grab it. like so now what I've done is I just left that kind of knot on the outside because I then covered it with some ribbon I thread some ribbon through and I added the little embellishment and just tied it in a bow so that hides it all because I'm not going to be doing that now this time all I'm going to do is just pull it through just so it comes down just to the top there that's now going to be hidden inside the middle part of this here so now just grab one of them pick up one of the elastic pieces and you want to just thread the book through it will just literally kind of rub against the ends but it's fine because once it gets to that middle section it will then fold over nicely okay so now that knot is hidden and again just grab that other one grab that other piece of elastic sorry I can't seem to pick it up with my nails there we go and again just thread the other piece through like so and there you have it so now you can see with two little books with just plain paper that's all I want <laughs> I 
I just want something to scribble in. I don't have to stick to a line. I can just literally just doodle or when you quickly think of something, I just wanted to have somewhere to write it down. So now I can just add my Velcro. If you are using the elastic, then you would have to hole punch a hole here on this end and just follow what I do in the traveler's notebook, which I will attach to this video and also at the end as well. But I'm just using quick, easy Velcro and that does the job perfectly. So I'm just taking two of these off and you wanna put them towards the outer edge of the little kind of fold over lip here. And again, do one down there and then just line it up so that this top bit here sits in the, the most um, outer score line of the bind, so the top score line there. Just kind of sit them together and then put the Velcro down. So make sure everything's lined up like so. And there you have it. I mean, that's just so quick and easy and that's now gonna last forever. It's laminated, it's sealed, nothing's gonna get in it. And when I have finished and filled up all these bits and pieces here, I can just cut some more copy paper and feed it through. So. One other bit I forgot to add is the pocket, but that's fine because I've done it at this point anyway. So the pockets, so you've got these two pieces here and all you want to do, so you've got your three and one eighth of an inch piece along the bottom and your two and three quarter on the side here. If I just cut one here, that's the shape you want to cut. So you're not cutting from corner to corner, you're kind of coming up by about half an inch and then cutting across. So you've got half an inch there. So if you want to draw a pencil mark for that, you can. But then all I'm going to do is sit it on top of my other piece and then just roughly use that. So it's just a rough way of cutting it there. And then just with my red tape, because the red tapes are really, really strong. Again, if you're going to sit there and pick at it, this will come off, but I don't <laughs> intend to do that. So red tape will be enough. And it's only to hold, like I said, just a little receipt or an important piece of paper that I've just screwed up in my pocket that I need to keep or... This is just, I just wanted a really practical little, you know, notebook. Um, nothing too bulky. Um, so this should work very well. So this is the first one. So, cause you stick the other one opposite. So let me just um, take this one off first, like so. And then all you're gonna do is just sit it in so you get a nice little equal kind of border running along the top and the bottom, like so. So now you've got a nice little pocket there to, like I said, put the papers in. And then this one here is going to go on the back. Oh, I think it's my nail bar has just come off. It's on the top, so I can rub that off in a minute. Um, this one is going to go that way up, so it's a little bit taller. So, like so. So there's that pocket. I've got that pocket there. And then it all just velcros up nicely. So again, if that gets bulky and I do need to fold other bits and pieces in there, it will still last fine. So there you have it. So there's my personalised one. And there are two Mother's Day ones as well. So perfect little handbag notebooks. So I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel to see more. Thanks for watching. Bye.